Pouchoir is a refined stenciled-based technique employed to create prints or to add color to pre-existing prints. The word pouchoir comes from French, meaning to stencil. Over 17,000 years ago, in the caves of La Salle, southwest France, Paleolithic humans made some of the earliest stencils known to mankind. Placing their hands up against the cave walls, the underground dwellers would blow pigment through reeds to create outline patterns of fingers and palms. This technique was most popular from the late 19th century through the 1930s with its center of activity in Paris. Pouchoir was primarily used to create prints devoted to fashion, patterns, and architectural design, and is most often associated with the Art Nouveau and Art Deco. It was, however, the increase in popularity of Japanese prints in the middle of the 19th century that spurred the refinement of the use of stencils culminating in the development of pouchoir. Pouchoir has been used in conjunction with other media such as engraving, lithography, and photography as means of adding color to a print. Each print is unique because it is done by hand. Each remains vivid in its both tactile and visual sense. Pouchoir led to the innovation of screen printing. In this video, you will see that you will need to make stencils. I, you can use heavyweight paper, you can use acetate, and you can use cardboard. I really like Duralar. It's a frosted mylar that I use with screen printing as well. It's dur very durable. You will need a hair dryer so you can dry in between each printing. You'll need water, brushes, pencils and pens to create your imagery before the stencils, tape, scissors, exactos to make your stencils, and then you can use any kind of acrylic paint. I prefer gouache, but you can also use acrylic paint. I like open, but that's just a preference. You can also use tempera, but it tends to smear a bit. While you can use tape directly to put your paper onto the table, I like to use tape, or you can use tape or a baking pan with magnets, which I'll show you. Here are examples of pouchoirs that I have done for your class. You'll see as I show them to you that they're done from the same stencil, but with many different variations in color and technique. First, this is an Atari joystick. You can see there are warm and cool colors. Next are women's shoes. I did them in reds and yellows on black paper, as well as chartreuses and yellows. Notice that they're the same stencil once again, but created differently. Here's a vintage car. I usually paint back into my pouchoirs after I do them. This will be what I'm showing you in the demo. It's a muscle car. It has also many different layers onto it after I've done the pouchoir.
first, what you'll need to do before anything is create a drawing to base your pouchoir off of. This is my muscle car from the 50s. You can see that I have outlined it in um, different colors. So all the colors will delineate where I'm actually going to create the stencil. So I'm going to only do th three colors in this demo, but I've done up to 20 stencils. It is important that you color it in so you can understand your stencils. These are the three stencils that I'll be using. Notice that they have um, the same squares in two corners. This is so that you can align them on the paper perfectly. So while they are clear, you'll see as I build them up on black paper how they do work. I'm going to start with a background, so it's going to create a negative space. This is so important to use the squares, or you can use circles, I don't care, on top of it, on top of the paper, so that you can align subsequently. You can do this with artist tape, but again, I prefer to use a baking tin with magnets. The reason being is it holds everything down perfectly and flat. Now, next, you're going to take your first stencil, and you can see there's the negative space. Again, I've cut this all by hand with an X-Acto. You can use sense scissors still also. A lot of times people like to do less complicated ones where they'll actually do um, different types of like circles and squares and adding them on top of one another. Matisse is a very good example of who you can look at as an inspiration. You'll also be referring to my presentation I will give in class. So there's one of my pouchoirs, there's my dear, one of my pouchoirs that um, I'm going to reference as well along with my drawing. First, you put down your stencil with the magnets. I like to use little magnets, but I also, usually I would encourage you not to make a pouchoir this small. It's very difficult. So when you start out, do one that is a much larger one, starting at at least eight by eight. The purpose of this is so that you can take the same mylar and reproduce it. So here I'm taking a yellow pencil for my registration. It's very important again, to do registration. Next, I'm going to use, um, well, I decided to go over it because the yellow was not very apparent for you. Next, I put away my other stencils in my drawing so I don't hurt them. I make sure I have a piece of paper to blot my paint. So with gouache, you have to do what's considered dry painting. Okay, so that means when you're doing it, you're going to be mixing your ink. The same thing with painting as an ink, you're always going to be adding dark to light. Since I'm doing a white gray background with a little bit of blue in it, you'll have the majority of the white and then you'll slowly mix the two, the blue and the gray together and then add that to the white. I have a palette knife that's smaller so I can mix smaller quantities, you do not need a lot. So think about this. You only need what you are going to print with. So this teeny amount will last a lot more than what I'm going to be painting with. So again, just like when you're doing any printmaking, you're going to mix until you see that it's a homogeneous color. Again, you're going to also want to do color um, tests before you actually do your um, pouchoir. So you have a reference, for instance, of your um, color aid, etc. to mix to. While you're doing this project, 
you'll also want to make more of the first color because the base color will be actually used within all the other subsequent colors. Gouache does dry really quickly, so if you're going to be working with gouache, you want to make sure that you, um, you know, make sure that you have saran wrap to protect it. With stencil brushes, that's my more expensive one, they are flat on the top. So notice that I'm going to slowly add. I tapped when I, I first put my um, brush into the ink or paint, I then tapped it on a piece of paper. That, that's because I didn't want to have too much, otherwise it will bleed under the stencil. With the magnet method that I'm doing, I haven't had very many problems with um, any of the paint going underneath the stencil. You can just use any kind of magnet you have around the house. It does not have to be fancy. Make sure if you use a baking tin that there is no insignia on the base, that it's completely flat. Since I'm going to be working with dark paper, as you can see, this black paper, I um, will have to build up the ink quality. Just like when you're doing any kind of printmaking, you're always going to have a base layer if you're going to shift color or if you're going to make the color um, more vivid. You're going to build it up. So you'll do a base layer of a lighter color and then continue to add. Gouache dries very, very quickly which is one of its great qualities. Also, it's a nuisance. So again, I'm gonna make the color more vivid by building on top. And just make sure, just like everything else, that you're, um, you really get the corners. Now, since Acrylic paints and gouache dry really fast. Make sure you keep the water around for yourself so that you can um, clean the brush and leave it into the water. I also normally, not in a demo, but I'll actually wash off my stencils in between each time. So here's the first color. It's already dry. So you should be able to make many different stencils because after the stencil making, Basically, the painting part does not take that long. Next, I'll be doing the second layer. So it will have um, the detail around the car. So as you can see in my little um, diagram, I'm going to be um, doing detail number one, which is the light blue. Notice how I'm aligning the stencil, not only to the, the reason I like Duralar is I can see through onto where the stencil is aligning, but also you can use it, the little, you know, registrations with the pencil marks like I showed you. Now I'm going to be making a light blue, another one. And I'm just doing a monochromatic just because it's a quicker demo. And notice I have a brilliant, brilliant um, cerulean blue, but I'm adding the base tone to it. Now that is counterintuitive to what I teach, but I don't want to add too much to make the color, the white will flatten it and make it pastel. I'm choosing another brush. Again, tap, 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 putting it on top, working for pretty fast. And you're basically kind of like pushing it down. So it's not, um, like you're painting, you're pushing, so dabbing. Since mine is very delicate, the image, I have to um, then sometimes kind of paint it, but normally you would just keep pushing and pushing and pushing um, with the flat brush. I bought those brushes on Amazon, not my very expensive one, but the other ones, um, I think it was, 10 of them for $6, I can let you know what they are in class. They're really good, they're cheap. If you clean them with soap and water, they'll stay, um, the synthetic brush will stay really nice and um, kind of soft. Again, push, 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 dry, um, dry brush. 
So they like to say gouache is a dry brush technique, meaning you don't want to have too much on your uh, brush. I also like to add a lot of metallics to my inks just because it will make it um, much more luminous. So again, I dried and building up on it again because I want the cerulean to really become even more vivid. Please do not use found stencils, please, please make your own. Also, you'll notice that this video is, what, 19 minutes? So basically, I am making a, a painting per 20 minutes. So if you have two weeks, you wanna think about making a lot of these and think about how do you put them on the paper? Why are you using what stencil you are? You can make multiple stencils and multiple different um, images and then stencil them on top of each other. What's nice is you can also do your Xerox transfer underneath it. So add all of these different things that I'm teaching you together. So I'm gonna be doing, I'm trying to go fast for the demo. Um, so now I'm going to, even though normally I would probably build up more, I'm going to now go to the next um, stencil. And there's the next color. And my final my final stencil. The thing I found with paper is it starts to kind of rip over time. So if you were going to make a lot of these, um, that's why I use the Duralar, or you could use acetate, it doesn't matter. Um, if you have access to a die cutting machine, you can also do it that way, but I think it's better for you all to do it by hand, because technically that's what you should be doing. Um, so now I'm going to go back and make a deeper color. But you can see you can keep adding and adding and adding and it's it's pretty fun. So another thing is I would make sure to do color swatches before doing your um, your painting. Uh, you don't want to you know use up your paint so I would definitely kind of make sure to do that ahead of time. And you can always save your paint in little Tupperwares or jars. Tap, tap, tap. Push, push, push. Notice how the deer is an inspirational character in the video. His name is Lawrence. So another thing with gouache that I love is it's really um, very close to oil and the fact that it has such a luminous quality. It's also very opaque too. So um, it's I just like that it's a very graphic material.
I have these very, very little areas, which is why I'm going back and forth to push down the paint into those little teeny spaces. Hair drying it. You don't have to use a hair dryer. You can spend your time. So this is my third color. And then if I wanted to, I could keep going back into it, which I will later on. Voila. C'est un pouchoir. Now, what I'm going to do is add just a little bit of flair, if you will, to it, um, just because I wanted to capture this essence of um, basically a muscle car. So I'm using a little bit of um, platinum colored tempera paint. Adding the bling. And I could keep going, and I will after this this demo. And there you are. So I hope you enjoyed this.